Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to play Roses of Picardy. Roses of Picardy is a lovely medium tempo number. It was written during the First World War and it's a British song written by, well the words were by Fred Weatherly who believe it or not wrote the words for Danny Boy. Uh, I'm going to give you three versions of this tune. Firstly the very skeleton of the tune, secondly a, a lovely decorated version of the tune and finally some ideas for a solo. Uh, but we're going to start off with the basic melody and I think it's very important with jazz numbers to differentiate between what is the skeleton of the melody and what is the bits that people hang on the top. So what you're going to get to start with is something very simple and this is what you have to learn uh, before you start to mess around with it, give it swing and give it some interest and some content of your own. But let's hear uh, with the backing um, the basic melody. Now that's the tune more or less as you might see it if it was in a, a published tune book. Um, but if you played it just like that then no one would, uh, would be impressed. It wouldn't have anything original, it wouldn't have anything jazzy about it. So you've got to find ways of uh, lightening that up, of swinging it, of breaking up the notes and making it somewhat more personal. This is something that Stefan Grappelli was really good at. Uh, although he would, you'd hear very little of the original tune when he played it, so he would straight away start to, to mess around with the notes. I'm going to give you some uh, ideas first of all about how you can break up uh, phrases like this which are mostly quarter notes um, and to make it into something more swinging. So if you take this simple scale <laughs> I'm going to give you different ways of approaching the different notes of that scale. Two, three, four. So that's running up the scale, but each and every note is messed around with in some way. If you look at bar two, then it is a crotchet triplet. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. That's your triplet. And um, you don't have to use all three notes of the triplet. You can just have one bit of the triplet and then slow the rest or whatever. Um, these little ones in uh, the third one, that is a very common thing that Grappelli did a lot. Um, uh, that would have been originally one note, but we do something like that, uh, a short note uh, followed by a longer note, and on the C, that kind of thing. These are almost always done with separate bows. And you'll recognise that as soon as you hear Grappelli playing a, a medium tempo tune, you'll hear that he does that all the time. Grappelli and the Hot Club never actually recorded this number, but there is a great version 
by uh, Chavalo Schmidt from 2005. I have to admit I'm not sure who the violinist is playing on this because I don't have the original album uh, but it's a really nice version which you can hear on YouTube and um, you, you'll hear a lot of these broken quarter notes crotchet triplets and that kind of thing and it's really smoothly played and very nice so I'm going to give you a, a rough transcription of the way that he played the melody So that's much more enjoyable listening to it played like that. Um, and you could, as an example, learn this version of the melody, but I wouldn't recommend that every jazz melody that you learn, you actually learn um, a particular version. Because what you really need to do is to have the ability uh, to take it phrase by phrase and just bow it the way you feel like it. Um, and that saves you an awful lot of trouble. All you have to do is learn the skeleton of the melody and you apply these techniques. Um, notice that he goes up an octave between the first and second half and that's a good general rule. Um, if it's a tune in a key where um, it works low down and it, it can also work high up without you going up into third position then that, that's a great thing to do. It just adds a lot of interest to the tune. There's one particular phrase that I like. Um, that one. Um, so that's applying it to a different set of notes. So that's a kind of a phrase which you can use uh, more or less wherever you want. Finally, uh, I'm going to give you a solo and I'm going to uh, concentrate on the, in this solo on the different things that the bow can do. So if you listen to the solo on this version, the Chavalo Schmidt version, you'll notice that uh, a lot of the time um, he is playing double time. So instead of... which is uh, eighth notes, which is how you would normally swing, uh, he very uh, easily goes into... that kind of thing, where it's sixteenths. And um, you could imagine the rhythm actually doubling up, to going to a chunk, 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 chunk. But in fact the rhythm is staying steady all the way through it. Um, and this is something that the guitar does as well. So that's a very useful thing to be able to do on a slow to medium tempo number, is to double the rate of your notes. And another thing you can do is playing rubato. <laughs> That kind of phrase, which doesn't have a lot of rhythm to it, but is very smooth and can actually run right over the notes and the bar lines. Uh, so that sounds great. And you can do some stuff on just the, uh, the quarter notes and eight notes. That kind of thing. Uh, and one other thing, watch my bow and see that I'm not staying all the time in the middle. which is what I uh, very often see my students doing, um, playing just those little middle length bows. So use some stuff at the tip for the smooth thing. Do some at the heel, which is where you get the percussion and do everything in between. Short notes, medium notes and long notes. So let's do um, twice round a solo for Rose of the Picardy.
So I hope you found this useful. There's a lot more uh, like this in my two books, Exploring Jazz Violin and Beginning Jazz Violin. And I also have my Music Gurus course based on the um, one of those books. If you like a copy of the dots that I've used here, then do subscribe and send me an email. And I'll see you again soon.